It's another Mate here with teacher Jenny. Join me for another topic. This time we are going to talk about hypothesis testing with independent t-test with assumption on unequal variances. A teacher wishes to find to find out if the e-learning teaching method is more effective than the traditional lecture method. So for each of the teaching methods, 20 students of approximately equal IQ levels were selected to be part of the study. The first 10 students were given e-learning teaching method, while the other 10 students were given traditional lecture method. After two months, the students were given a 30-item test to assess their performance and the scores of the students are shown on the table below. So this is now our problem. Now notice on the problem we have 20 students as our sample, but the 20 students are divided into two. The 10 students will be undergoing e-learning teaching method, while the other 10 will be given traditional lecture method. So to test out our uh, claim or the claim of the teacher there according to the teacher uh, he wishes to find out if the e-learning teaching method is more effective than the traditional lecture method so first let's try to prove the claim by simply doing the hypothesis testing so let's start off with naming our hypothesis let's state the null and alternative hypothesis so for the null here, whatever will be the scenario of your claim, whether it's going to be an alternative uh, hypothesis or any other, what you are going to declare on the null hypothesis will be a statement wherein no difference at all, or you can have it stated like this. The e-learning method is as effective as a traditional method of teaching. So meaning to say, if I'm going to write this in symbol, we, we are trying to compare the mean of the two samples here. This would simply mean that in our H sub O or the null hypothesis in symbol, this will be the mu sub 1 is equal to the mu sub 2. So that will be our null hypothesis. Now for the alternative, because this one here is already the alternative hypothesis the claim of the teacher there is the alternative hypothesis because it says there is more effective there's a keyword here more that means to say that alternative now is the e-learning method is as more effective than the traditional method of e of teaching now in our symbol we can have it as Alternative hypothesis, that will be mu sub 1. This is more effective, that means to say that that is greater than our mu sub 2. Now take note, our mu sub 1 refers to the mean of the first variable. It could be the e-learning. And then the mu sub 2 there is the mean of the, the sample which is on the traditional uh, lecture method so let us now go to step number two step number two we are to determine the appropriate test to be used now since this is two samples two samples because we have separated the 20 students as the sample here one which is receiving or the 10 there which is receiving e-learning teaching method the other 10 is receiving a traditional lecture method so the two samples there are independent so that is why in our test we are to choose t-test independent t-test now under independent t-test there are two types of independent t-test one which is we assume equal variances the other one is we as we assume unequal variances later i'll be explaining that one we're on step number three determining the critical value letter c
So first, we need the information on the type of tail test to use here. So we are going to go back. So from the very beginning, or on step number one, we had this information. The null hypothesis is with mu sub 1 equal to mu sub 2. Alternative is with mu sub 1, which is greater than the mu sub 2. So based on the following information, we are going to identify the type of tail test. We are going to refer to the alternative hypothesis all the time in determining our type of tail test. Since this is greater than the type of tail test to use is a one-tailed test. Now take note there are two different types of one-tailed tests. We have the right-tailed and the left-tailed. So determining that one, that will be based on our symbol here, which is greater than. Greater than symbol, if you try to look at the pointer here or the tail of that symbol that is pointing towards the right. So this is a right-tailed test. Okay, next off, we need also the information on the level of significance or the alpha that we need in testing out our p-value later on. So we have our alpha, which is equal to 0 0.05, or the 5% level of significance. And then we also need the information on the DF, but later on we'll have that one because we have different, um, different formula for computing for the DF whenever we've got two samples. So anyways, if we are going to use our Excel, automatic, it will be given as that in part of the information of the different measures that we are going to uh, receive whenever we do t-test. So let's now have uh, the critical value as well. So we have now the different scores of the students with the different learning method. So first, let's try to check whether they have equal variances or unequal variances by going to the data analysis and getting the descriptive statistics for each of the variable. So we'll start. Okay, so we'll click on the summary statistics. And that is now our descriptive measures for the first variable, the e-learning method. So we are going to round it off to three decimal places. And then we go for the second learning method, the traditional. We are also going to check the variance here by going to the descriptive statistics on the data analysis, inputting the range, and then click on the rows. By the way, we are to click on the rows because it will not be reading if we are going to click on the column. And make sure that you've got the output range and check the summary test. So there you go with the descriptive statistics. And then we are going to get the ratio of the bigger standard variance, I mean sample variance, over the smaller sample variance. So we have there 38.711 over 5.377778. And then we've got now our ratio. So playing the rule of thumb, everybody, since that is greater than 4, and that means we have unequal variances. So we'll now test out our, our data. So we are going to get go to the data analysis, click on the t-test to sample, assuming unequal variances. Unequal variances because our ratio of the bigger and smaller sample variance is greater than 4. So we go for the variable 1 range, e-learning. And then go for the variable to range, the traditional. And then click on the output range. You can click anywhere there if you want to. And then click on OK. So there you go with your result.
don't forget to round it off to three decimal places it's like what i did on uh the descriptive measures a while ago but anyways that doesn't mean uh, that doesn't change our uh test statistic result so here you go we have our test statistic four our t-test to sample assuming an equal variance We're now on step number three. Let's continue with a step number three here for some missing information. Our first information that we declared a while ago before we had uh, computation of the test statistic, I mean the critical value and so with the test statistic, we had the one tail test, which is a right tail test. And then we have the alpha at 0 0.05 and then the DF, which is 11. Now, the DF there for an independent t-test with unequal variances is very complicated to compute for that one. So, why, why bother yourself computing for that one where, in fact, that is already given on the result of the t test statistic or t-test with two sample assuming unequal variances. So, let us now write our critical value. For the critical value, we are to be careful on this because one mistake on choosing the critical value here, that means to say this one is incorrect. So here, we've got one tailed test that's right tailed. So we have critical values here. For this one, it's a one tail. This one, this is for the two tail. So make sure that you are going to get the, the one which is appropriate to the type of tail test that you have. So my critical value is 1.796, and that is positive. Okay, so we are now on step number four. We are going to compute for the test statistic. So for computing the test statistic, we are done with that one. We did that one on the Excel. So all we have to do is to just grab the information on the result table. So here under uh, P value, we are going to look at one tail because from a while ago we had that one as one tailed, right tailed. So that should be the T, I mean the, the P value on a one tail. So this is 0 0.042. Now for the T value or the, the value of the test statistic here, this is what we have under the T stat which is negative 1.905. So if you wanted to compare your T value and so with a critical value for the decision making, you may do so. Or if you want to go for the P value and then compare that one with the level of significance, you may do so. But anyways, majority of the research uh, group, they will be using the P value Comparing that one with the level of significance for the decision making. So we will be do also doing that one here. We are now on our last part of our uh, hypothesis testing. So we are going to decide as to whether to reject or fail to reject our null hypothesis based on our p-value on the result of our test. So based on the table here, we've got p-value on one tail, or this is actually our t-value. So we will be using this one in comparison with our alpha, which is 0 0.05. So since we have our p-value, which is 0 0.042, comparing that one with 0 0.05, we can say that since 0 0.042 is less than 0 0.05, we are going to reject our null hypothesis. So in conclusion, we can say that the claim of the teacher really is correct, that the e-learning method is as more effective than the traditional method of teaching because we have rejected the null hypothesis. Yes, there is difference between our um, value on the mean of the two samples there so that is why we are rejecting the null hypothesis and of course we have no choice but to accept the 
claim of the teacher. This is now your teacher Jenny saying good luck and please practice more on doing the hypothesis testing.